Chapter 7.4 Solving Equations Using the Balance Method Often when we're dealing with equations it's helpful to think of it in terms of a weight or a mass and you can see the simple set of scales I've drawn here that 2 balances out the 2 we write that mathematically as 2 equals 2 now if I change my scales or I change my equation here by for example adding one to that side you can see that they don't equal each other anymore this is three this is still two to keep them equal or balanced I must do the same thing to the other side hence they now balance each other and that's the idea of what we're doing by solving equations using the balance method whereas in the last uh, section we were dealing with the backtracking method and, and the boxes and the flowcharts like this I said before we the top bit equals the bottom bit you can think of it as the same way two x plus three equals seven two x equals four x equals two we're going to look at the mathematics behind how we end up with a sequence like that Work example 11. Form an equivalent equation to each of the following by performing the operation given in brackets to both sides of the equation. So in part A we have x minus 5 equals 7 and I want to add 6 and I'm using the balanced method so I want to do it to both sides. So I'm going to have x minus 5 plus 6 equals 7 plus 6 you can see I've done it to both sides of my equation on this side negative 5 plus 6 equals 1 and I've got my x in there as well so x plus 1 equals 7 plus 6 is 13 that's as simple as it is I'm not adding the 6 to the x I can add it to the like terms the negative 5 plus 6 I can work out Part B, 5x plus 3 equals 8, and I want to subtract 2 from both sides. So I do the same thing. 5x plus 3, I write all of that down again, and then I subtract 2. Write down my 8, subtract 2. And I've done it to both sides there. Okay, let's see what we can work out. I'm not going to do anything with my 5x, so I'll just write him down again my 3 minus 2 is 1 it's a positive 1 plus 1 and 8 minus 2 is 6 ok I didn't do anything with my 5x so I wrote it down again I worked this bit out to that and wrote it down notice how I'm trying to keep my equal signs lined up here on both sides there just keeps the, the, uh, the equation looking a little bit neater and it's just a little bit better way to set it out in mathematics it's the same principle as um, starting a sentence in English with a capital and finishing with a full stop. Just try and keep them lined up and neatly like that. Okay, part C. X over 2 equals 4, and I want to multiply both sides by 2. Okay, so I'm going to have X over 2 times 2 equals 4 times 2. Now, what I've got on my left hand side is 2 divided by 2 2 divided by 2 is 1 x times 1 is just x 4 times 2 is 8 and you can see in this case the inverse of divide by 2 is times 2 I multiplied both sides by 2 and I found my solution x equals 8 part d 8x equals 24 and I'm going to divide by 4 so I've got the easiest way to do that is just go divide by 4 divide by 4 8 divided by 4 is 2 24 divided by 4 is 6 because 6 times 4 is 24 and I'm done worked example 12 solve the equation 
3x minus 7 equals 11 using the balance method. Check your solution by substitution. So we're just checking that we're right at the end here. All right, so let's have a go. 3x minus 7 equals 11. There's my equation. All right, so what I'm going to do in this case is I'm not going to worry about him yet. I'm going to deal with this minus 7 on the end here first. This number on the end here first is the first thing I'm going to deal with. So, what's the inverse of minus? It's plus. So the inverse of minus 7 is plus 7. That's what I started with, and I'm going to plus 7 there. And I'm going to do the same over here to keep them balanced, to keep them equal to each other. The reason I added 7 is because it was the inverse of the minus, and negative 7 plus 7 gives me 0. So I'm left with 11 plus 7 is 18. Sometimes we think of it as we're moving the minus 7 over this side, it's becoming plus 7. But what we're really doing is adding 7 to both sides to prove that that equals 0 and is eliminated. And we add the 7 on to that side. Okay. Now, I've got a 3 times my x. The inverse of times is divide, so I'm going to divide by 3 to both sides. Now, 3 divided by 3 is going to cancel out, because 3 divided by 3 is 1. It's just 1x, which is just my x. 18 divided by 3, how many times does 3 go into 18? 6 times. So x equals 6 is my solution. Now we need to check using substitution. Okay, so I've got 3x minus 7 equals 11. I'm going to put a 6 in for my x. 3 times 6 minus 7 equals 11. And we work it out from there using our normal order convention. 3 6s are 18. 18 minus 7. You can see we've got the right answer so therefore we're correct and that's how we do it notice the setting out i've got this is the first part of the question over here where i do my backtracking and that's how it should start to be set out and over here is where i did my substitution to check i had the right answer